Hey YouTube, it's Dimitri, and today we're gonna to dive in here and compare the CFA um, with a quantitative master's. And my quantitative master's here, I'm defining this as like uh, master's in financial engineering, master's in computational finance, master's in mathematical finance, essentially like engineering, financial engineering type degrees. So I get this question a lot. People wanna know like, hey Dimitri, should I get a CFA or should I get a, you know, like a quantitative master's degree? And it's really hard to compare the two because one is a designation, one is a like a master's degree, and so they're not really comparable. So the best way to do this, I think, is gonna dive into the educational aspects of this. So this video is gonna dive into the words. It's gonna look at words from different websites um, that have study guides, for example, for the CFA, and the CFA's actual official website. It's gonna dive into common topics and words from uh, financial engineering masters websites as well. And then we're gonna look at the two differences in education. This by no means covers everything, okay? There's lots and lots and lots of topics, both in the CFA world, as well as the quantitative finance world. We just can't cover everything. It would take me hours. So let's dive on in here and see what these words look like. Okay, so this first slide, we're gonna start off with the CFA. This is what I call the general slide. So these are the general topics that you're required to know um, to do the CFA. Uh, there are 10 main areas of the CFA. Uh, these areas are ethical and professional standards, uh, quantitative methods, economics, financial reporting and analysis, corporate finance, equity investments, fixed incomes, derivative, alternative investments, and portfolio management. So as you can see here from the word diagram, it makes the word that appears the most often bold. You can see here that investments is the number one word um, just in the general topics. It makes complete sense. The CFA is for traditional financial analytics um, geared towards the investing world. So this slide I think makes complete sense. So let's dive in here to the first one, which is the ethics and professional standards here. Uh, you can see the first one is integrity. Um, and there's a lot of other big ones here like professional, competence, capital, and interest markets. Um, so in the smaller words too, you see a lot of the very important aspects of being a CFA here, like responsibilities. It has also words around like conflict, recommendation, encourage, you know, independence, candidates. So in a lot of these aspects here, the CFA, you're gonna be working with your both your employer uh, and you're gonna have clients here. These are kind of the things you're gonna study around the ethics side. So this slide basically covers it here. Uh, I think the ethical part of the CFA is pretty straightforward. Um, so let's just dive on into the more like interesting topics uh, behind this. So the second topic here is the quantitative methods. Um, you can see here the number one word is distribution. So a lot of the quantitative methods parts falls around like hypothesis testing. It falls around Monte Carlo simulation. Um, you can see here they look at like non-normal and normal distributions which are in here. It has some statistics, talks about like errors, uh, looks at p-values of these different tests, you know, and it talks about like time value of money, and it covers net present value. So this one in general just covers a lot of different topics more or less related to like interest rates, futures. Uh, again, Monte Carlo is like a big piece here in the quantitative section. But again, this is not like a what you should study guide. There's a whole list online which I'll let you guys dive into. But these are just the most common words that come up and this is like the main focus of the quantitative methods portion. And then next as we dive on here to economics, you can see the two biggest words here are supply and demand. Uh, basic econ 101 here. But again, being able to calculate out like dead weight loss, looking at fiscal policy, monetary policy, interest rates, you know, utility curves, maximization equations, inflation, exchange rates. Like there's a lot of topics here all kind of playing into the economic side. Uh, but again, these are all solid economic topics. Uh, trying to cover all these can be difficult studying for the CFA, which is one of the challenges actually covering the wide variety of topics that are on this exam. All right, so driving on in here to financial reporting and analysis here, um, no surprise here, accounting is number one. Uh, statement is the other big word here, which makes sense because you have like your income statement, you know, you have your cash flow statement, um, you're gonna have your balance sheet here, you're gonna have your FASB regulations, you have your expenses, cost, cost of goods sold, inventory, right? A lot of this is just accounting based but it's trying to read these through a financial perspective here. And so again, there are a lot of topics here. And you can see how all these words here tie into like financial reporting and analysis, which again is the main topic here. Now let's take a look at the corporate finance side. So the corporate finance side, again, is not the same as the financial reporting and analysis. Uh, that focuses more like on the accounting aspect of finance here. Um, but the corporate finance one is like on capital, you know, leveraged actions, dividends, bonds, costs, net present value. So a lot of this is focusing around the fact that you have to like 
look at how they value corporations, look at how corporations structure. So it's more detailed on like the corporate structure, the corporate functionings, how these are valued. So it's similar to more or less like an equity valuation, but it's different here because um, you're looking at it, leveraging different positions, your debt, your equity ratios here. So again, it still takes in some of the accounting, but it's really focused on the corporate structure itself. And next here, we're gonna dive into equity investments. So equity investments, there's a lot of big words in here. Uh, indices, analysis, market, stock, equity. Uh, that makes complete sense here because equities are also known as stocks. But if you look into some of these smaller words here, the ones that I guess are would be an important aspect would be like, you know, your ROAs, your return on assets, your DCF, so the discounted cash flow models. I'm um, looking at liqu liquidity, so there's liquidation in here, you know, assets, efficiency, right, enterprise valuations. like. This is really coming into the equity side. So how do the equity markets work? Um, how do you get like a company into like a, I, an IPO here? Um, and then actually looking at how you do the valuations and how the, really the markets work and fluctuate uh, given the analysis here. So it's gonna be a little bit hands-on. It's gonna be more focused on like the mechanics of the markets. But again, it's not gonna be as much math as say the quantitative methods section here, but it's gonna cover a lot of the important aspects to understanding how these markets work. And then on the flip side of this, you have your fixed income market. So this is going to be bonds. Um, you can see the big words here like bonds, securities, yield, risk, and credit. So there's a lot going on with the fixed income world. Um, it can go very, very deep. But you can see some of the bigger words here um, are like options adjusted, convexity, markets preference analysis, segmentation, you know, forward trading, forward trading, uh, funds, mortgages. So I think this is important in the aspect of both you have traditional fixed income like bonds um, and corporate bonds, for example, here. And then you also have things such as swaps and forwards. So you have other different rates and like asset backed securities that are fixed income but have derivative products here. Uh, this will make it a little more difficult. And again, here, I just want to point out like the spread portion as well. So they're going to be looking at interest rate spreads. You're going to be looking at like the yield curves. You're going to be looking at how they fluctuate, how they flatten, how they increase and decrease over time and what this means for the market. And next we're gonna dive in here to the derivatives portion um, of these exams. Uh, so this is like options is the biggest one. You see derivatives, forwards, swaps, calls. Uh, these are like the big topics here. So this is going to cover kind of your overview of you know, all your different options in general. And then if you look into the smaller details here, you're gonna look like margins. And then you have some of your Greeks, like your Vega, your Theta, your Rho, your Gamma. And then you're gonna have more or less like the strategy of this. They're gonna talk about different instruments and volatility. But again, this is gonna cover kind of the blanket of like calculating this. And I know from a lot of people have taken the CFA, I'm actually calculating the swaps is the difficult portion. I guess the currency swaps are a little more challenging. And so in this kind of picture here, you'll see that there's a lot of different aspects and it even covers the binomial pricing uh, for these derivative products. And then to move away from the derivative side here, the next portion is going to be alternative investments. So again, investments, this is like the biggest one. This has the most common uh, word within the alternative investment side. So the alternative investments is going to cover like real estate, you know, and hedge funds and like venture capital, for example, here. But a lot of this is going to come down to things that you see in the smaller words here. So you have like illiquidity, you have volatility, there's partnerships to consider, uh, diversification of these different assets with your typical portfolio. But in general, this is gonna cover a wide variety of different topics here. So it's gonna cover commodities, which again, plays back into your derivatives. It's gonna cover like interest rates, which covers into your fixed income part. It's gonna cover like real estate, which is kind of on its own here. But in general, there's a lot of topics on how alternative investments work, uh, how you value them, and how all these play into your portfolios and your other investments, and then also helping customers actually choose choose the right products for what their needs are. So as we dive on in here to portfolio management and wealth planning, uh, you can see a lot of the big words here like funds, portfolio, uh, return, capital, risk here. So this is gonna be like putting together all the little pieces here. So you're gonna have alternative investments, you're gonna have your equities portion, you have your fixed income, right? And a lot of these topics all focus around like the customer and the client as well as optimizing the portfolio here. There's gonna be different things to consider such as liquidity. Um, you're gonna be looking at different things such as the cap M, you're gonna be using some statistics. Um, again, this comes down to like man management and policy and planning and considering like pensions and things. And so portfolio management and wealth planning is really just gonna encompass a lot of these topics again here. So as you see, as we went through uh, with the CFA, 
all these different areas are unique, but all these different areas are connected. So you can't do like, you know, corporate finance without accounting, and you can't do portfolio optimization without looking at alternative investments, and you can't look at equity and fixed incomes without doing your portfolio. And so all these are gonna to come together into a final financial analysis. So you'll have a very, very solid education on um, finance, and I would say traditional finance here. But let's dive on in here into quantitative finance and see what their general topics are. Okay, so you're gonna notice the first thing here is that there are only really four main areas in quantitative finance. There's computer science, there's finance, there's statistics, and there's mathematics. Those are the big four here. Um, I don't know why it's broken them up a little bit bigger and smaller, but in general, those are the main areas and those are what we're gonna cover and dive into and look at. So let's start off with finance here. A lot of the finance here is going to cover um, a mix, just a wide mix of stuff. It's going to be covering, you know, fixed income. So we see income and yields here and bonds. It's gonna cover like more corporate finance kind of principles such as the cap M. It's gonna cover things such as derivatives, Monte Carlo simulation, budgeting, real analysis. It's gonna cover options. It's going to cover, you know, the balance sheet. It's gonna cover investments and strategy. So it's going to try to cover as many topics as possible, but this is typically the smallest area of good, solid financial engineering and computational mathematics programs. Uh, that being said, this part is very weak compared to a CFA. So if you wanna get into the traditional finance realm here, which is more or less what this is covering, um, how markets work, how credit works, how fixed income works, you would go into traditional finance, uh, but you're gonna take at least two or three of these classes in a good financial engineering program, and a lot of these are taught in the MBA program programs and are just borrowed for the financial engineering and computational finance programs. So let's dive into the main portion of a lot of these financial engineering programs, which is the math. So if you notice here on the math, one of the big things you'll learn, especially with pricing derivatives and engineering financial products, is you'll be looking at like Brownian motion, you'll be looking at like the Feynman CAC, you'll be looking at Edo's lemma, taking Edo's integrals, you'll be looking at stochastic processes, you'll be learning how to bootstrap data um, to do more modeling, you'll be looking at pricing, you'll be looking at the Cox Ingersoll Ross model, you'll be looking at differential, so partial differential equations. Um, there's a lot of different pieces here, there's continuous time discrete time, but a lot of this is focused on the derivative pricing, but you can see there's a lot of it is more math focused. Um, this is going to be very different from the CFA in the sense that it's more math focused. So there's not gonna be a lot of like the traditional finance and how products works and how markets work. You're supposed to get that in the finance portion of this. But again, you're not gonna cover nearly as deep as somebody with a CFA in traditional finance uh, or someone with an MBA uh, or somebody with a master's in finance, for example, or accounting. But this is just going to give you hardcore math you're gonna be diving into, uh, just learning how to calculate out a lot of the math behind like the Black-Scholes model, uh, fixed income models like the Durman toy, Black Derman toy model. Um, so let's move on here to the next section which is the statistics side. Uh, so, so the statistics side, again, is going to be vast. There are gonna be a lot of different classes you can take here. Um, data science and machine learning is just coming up now, so a lot of these programs are taking these. Uh, and you can see in here, there's like neural networks, there's like decision trees, but a lot of the stats behind financial engineering is going to be time series based. Uh, it's gonna be like smoothers and splines, uh, kernels. So how do you smooth data to fit specific applications? And you're gonna be covering a lot of different topics, both that are categorized as parametric statistics, which is more your standard statistics, and non-parametric statistics, which are going to cover different approaches to building um, distributions that are used within your models that don't actually meet the standardized approaches. There's no parameter that defines the distribution of the data that you're working with. And then finally here, we have computer science here to round out the quant degrees. So this is gonna be heavy in C++. You can see it's one of the largest ones. Uh, calculus, threads, so threading, multi-threading, using parallel computing is big. You'll notice that Python is a bit smaller, but Python is becoming more and more used. But again, it's not as fast as C++. And a lot of these words are gonna be focused around the C++ and object-oriented languages. So you can see like class and memory and pointers and like data structures, recursion, things like these are all computer science focused. And so that's kind of the summary here of like the masters in financial engineering. So just to compare these in general, right? The CFA covers a lot of topics because you can see there's so many more slides and parts to it. They all kind of work together. They're all more traditionally finance focused. And yes, they have a quantitative method portion. But again, this is not going to cover like Ito's lemma and taking like partial differential equations and stochastic processes, right? It's going to be focused on like, 
the balance sheet, the income statement, you know, doing Monte Carlo simulations, things that you would do in traditional finance. So if you have a finance degree, you have a business degree, you should have an idea of what the CFA is covering. Um, on the flip side of this, so when you have quantitative finance or you have like mathematical finance, computational finance, financial engineering, these are not going to be covering a lot of the general sayer. So we just like buff over quickly on like, okay, this is, um, you know, a stock market. This is generally how it works. These are derivative products. And then we're going to be diving into the mathematics behind like how you calculate derivative products, how you model things statistically. So we're, they're not going to get the same depth and knowledge of like how the markets work. They're not gonna understand how the products are used. Um, they might take a class on portfolio optimization, which will be heavily math driven. But again, they're probably not gonna be focusing all the different products that you can use. So they're not gonna be looking at like ETFs versus mutual funds. They're not gonna be looking at like pension planning. Um, they're not gonna be looking at like insurance sides of it. They're not gonna be looking at like how do you help a customer in a traditional finance setting? And so I think just to wrap this video up quickly here, Again, I did not cover everything. I did not cover the structures of the exams, but I think the key takeaway here is realizing the topics and both of these are very different. One of them is not better than the other, but it depends what you want to do. If you want to go into traditional finance and you want to be helping clients and customers, you wanna work at these large banks, like working in ETFs and everything, right? You should probably go get a CFA because you're very, very qualified uh, to do financial analytics and investing analytics. On the flip side of that, if you wanna go do like arbitrage theory, statistical arbitrage, derivative pricing, like exotic option creations, all of this is very, very math focused. And so when you have teams that are doing this math focused, you typically would work like in a hedge fund or risk management. But again, you wouldn't be working on the traditional financing side. But in general, these topics are just very different. I hope you guys like this video and take away kind of the key topics that are studied in both. And again, I can't emphasize this enough. This is not a cover all video. This is just to show you um, kind of the big topics in both of them. So you can actually look in to see if you're more qualified or would like to do the CFA, or if you're more qualified and would like to do the master's in financial engineering. Um, I do not think these are comparable. I do not think they cross paths. Yes, you do have quants, people with financial engineering, quantitative degrees who get CFAs. I'm sure you have people with CFAs who also get like quantitative masters, but in general, the paths, the work, the careers, they are not crossing very often. Uh, it'd be very rare that these are even comparable. So I hope this video makes clear on the topics that you study in each program, and you can use that to better select what you would like to get um, after you graduate with your undergraduate degree. Anyways, thanks for watching. Don't forget to like, share, and subscribe. And as always, until next time.